alaikum everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us in commemorating the 75th anniversary of the Nakba, the catastrophe. This is why we are here today. This is why we are assembling. It's been 75 years, but we will never forget and never forgive those who gave up our land and those who continue to actively displace us. My name is Fatin Joya and I am from al Palestine Right to Return Coalition. And I am here with several organizations that have co-endorsed this action who will be joining us and saying a few words. We are Palestinians and allies and we continue to commemorate the Nakba and the ongoing struggle of the Palestinian people. And we hold high their right to return to their land for every refugee to be able to return to their ancestral land. And we will continue to assemble year after year and as long as it takes to hold high the people's right to their land, to live freely, and to be able to return to their original homes, wherever that may be. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. And we will continue to organize and agitate until we see a free Palestine. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. and allies that have helped put this together for us. And the first person I'd like to call on is Selma from the Answer Coalition. Please give it up for Selma from Answer Coalition. Thanks. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Selma. I'm an organizer with the Answer Coalition. Yeah, thank you, everyone. 75 years ago, the leaders of the Zionist movement said that Palestinians are going to grow up and that Palestinians are going to move on and forget. But we know that that's not true, right? They thought that the new generation of Palestinians would grow up and that they would forget. But all of us here today are a testament of, that, of, the, of the fact that that is not true. Today, people all over the world gather to show their solidarity with the Palestinian struggle. We remember 75 years of ethnic cleansing by the Zionist occupation, enabled by their imperialist champions, enabled by this very country that sends billions of dollars to Israel every year. We know that where there is injustice, there will always be resistance. And we will continue to uplift the Palestinian struggle everywhere that we go and every chance that we get. I know that us Arabs celebrated Mother's Day a while ago, back in March, but I want to recognize all the Palestinian moms and grandmas today who keep the memory of the Nakba and of the resistance alive, who name their children after Palestinian villages, who know that their children are going to continue the fight, right, and they're going to, they're going to fight for their right to return. Israel has been attacking Gaza over the last week. More than 30 people have already been killed. An entire family was wiped out. Three children were murdered during the recent attack. But we know that children in Gaza struggle to survive every single day, regardless of whether or not an attack is launched by the occupation. Israel controls who and what is allowed to enter Gaza. This means that essential goods like food and medicine cannot enter. The occupation is strangling Palestinians in every imaginable way. We've witnessed Israeli Zionists come out and protest over these last few months, protesting against the current government. They've been calling for democracy after Netanyahu filed the Minister of Defense. 
But we know that there can be no democracy in an apartheid system, right? We know that. But we know, um, I'm sorry. In, in fact, the Zionist protesters who, who were calling for democracy violently attacked those who were trying to raise their Palestinian flags. So what kind of democracy are they calling for then? Every single Israeli government that has existed over the last 75 years was committed to the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. And that's not a democracy, right? It's been an apartheid state from its inception. And we will not be confused by these shallow calls for democracy. We know that there can be no justice. There can be no justice on stolen land. And we have a duty as people living in the US to fight back against Zionism, to call out America's endless support of Israel, and we do not do so by appealing to the morality of the American government, right? We won't beg the American government to recognize what's happening in Palestine, to recognize the genocide against Palestinians. We know that empire does not have a conscience. They know what they're doing. War is profitable for them. The U.S. sends billions to Israel because they see it as an investment. Because the billions sent to Israel are used to buy weapons from American manufacturers, and like we've said before, every time, every time that a bomb is dropped on Gaza, there's an American billionaire that gets a little richer. Billions of dollars are sent to Israel, while people in this country sleep on the streets. Our duty then is to organize the working class people in this country, to make it very clear that America's commitment to war is at odds with our own struggle for housing and for health care. The liberation of the Palestinian people is connected to the liberation of Palestinian people everywhere. And we have a common enemy, and so we must have a common strategy to defeat that enemy, to defeat imperialism, and to defeat capitalism. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our ancestors, to learn from the African struggles for liberation that express solidarity with Palestine. To learn from Cuba, who sends doctors every year to Palestine, and who brings doctors from Palestine to train them in Cuba. Right? We, we, we have to learn from the Black Panthers who connected the, the liberation for black lives to the liberation, the, the liberation of black lives to the liberation of Palestinian lives. Our struggles are connected and we're going to struggle alongside one another until Palestine is free. So please join me in saying long live the Palestinian resistance. 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 Sorry, I almost fell there. Long live the Palestinian resistance. Long live the Palestinian resistance. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Selma, for Answer Coalition. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Struggle for Socialism. 
And we also have UNAC. Thank you so much for your endorsement and for being with us today. Our next speaker is going to be Thomas Cox from Brooklyn for Peace. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So pleased to be here today. Brooklyn for Peace took a vote on whether to endorse this day, this event, and it was unanimous that we are supporting uh, Alauda and all the groups here today because this is really a human rights movement. This is this is not anything like taking sides. Uh, the only side we can talk about is human rights and justice for all. Uh, we do know that Israel came into being as a colonial project and went on to uh, ethnically cleanse Palestine 75 years ago and ever since then it's been an incremental uh, land theft using the techniques of intimidation and murder and forcing people from their ancestral homes. So once you recognize this, there's nothing else to do but to support this cause. People here today are united in recognizing that uh, there's nothing to do with religion, uh, nothing to do with uh, anything other than us coming together to say no to the occupation, no to settler extremism, and uh, thank you, thank you all. So glad to be here today. Thank you. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Lucha, lucha Palestina! Lucha, lucha Palestina! Lucha, Israel is a terrorist state. Israel is a terrorist state. Israel is a terrorist state. 
of New York speak at this time, so please give it up for members of the Palestinian Youth Movement. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. We are members of the Palestinian Youth Movement. We are a grassroots transnational movement of Palestinian and Arab youth in exile who believe in the full liberation of our land and the return of our people to Palestine. As Palestinian and Arab youth in the diaspora, and particularly in the belly of the beast, this land colonized as the United States, we believe that we have a duty and a responsibility to assume an active role in our people's struggle for national liberation against the forces of Zionism, colonialism, racism, and imperialism. Today we are gathered to commemorate the 75th year of Al Nakba, the catastrophe of Zionism that began in Palestine in 1948 and that is ongoing today. In doing so, we are recommitting to our role and responsibility towards Palestine and towards our movement for national liberation. We do not gather simply in solidarity with the people of our homeland, but as actors in the struggle advanced by all sectors of Palestinian society, from our youth to our political prisoners. So on this day, we would like to send a clear and direct message to the violent Zionist regime. Our resistance is alive and well. The struggle continues into liberation and return. Reclaiming our role towards our homeland means linking arms with our comrades standing against imperialism and colonialism. We demand justice for our black siblings fighting for their liberation here in the U.S. and globally. And we are absolutely enraged by the recent white vigilante murder of Jordan Neely. We stand for our indigenous comrades who are the rightful caretakers of the stolen land upon which we stand today. Canarsie and Munsi Lenape land. And we stand with our Filipino, Boricua and Cuban comrades as well as other, all other people fighting, fighting for self-determination, sovereignty, and dignity against the brutality of U.S. imperialism. Despite ongoing Zionist colonial violence, raids, demolitions, and massacres, our people have shown incredible unity through brave and steadfast resistance. Between the unity intifada of 2021 and today's unity of the fronts, the Palestinian resistance has not only won countless victories for our struggle, but it also continues to win the hearts of Palestinian masses. Our people's unity has only grown with the growth of our resistance. When our resistance fighters are threatened, such as the example of Odei Tamimi in Jerusalem, our youth collectively shave their heads to protest, to protect his identity. When our martyrs fall, entire university campuses in Palestine stand in mobilization, such as the examples of Jawad and Dafar Rimawi. It is because of our people's resistance that we see greater fragmentations in the Zionist entity than ever before. Today, following the example set by our people, we stand unified in support of their bravery and support of the unquestionable right to resist colonialism and imperialism. We cannot talk about our people's brave resistance without mentioning the important role that our prisoners play. Zionist incarceration aims to isolate Palestinian freedom fighters from the rest of Palestinian society, as well as to attempt to crush the Palestinian resistance. Our prisoners fight battles for dignity every day through hunger strikes, affirming the importance of resistance and proving that Zionist incarceration is a failing strategy to crush the spirit of our resistance. The Zionist entity is aware of this reality. That's why they refuse to release our beloved martyr Khadr Adnan's body to allow his, his people and his family to mourn his death. In the last 72 hours, 
The occupation has relentlessly bombed Gaza. They have targeted civilians and leaders. The occupation bombs Gaza to fragment the resistance. They bomb Gaza to liquidate our collective spirit. They bomb Gaza because the occupation is afraid and weak. But Gaza's message remains clear. The occupation's days are numbered. Palestinians will never submit. Every single day, Gaza shows that they will not be strangled by the, by the blockade. They show that you cannot besiege liberation. You cannot besiege resistance. You cannot besiege freedom. Gaza, you have shown us the cost of liberation. Gaza, you have protected the resistance. Gaza, we will never abandon you. <laughs> to stand unified with our people's resistance, to increase the fragmentation of the Zionist project, we must remember to be unapologetically opposed to all efforts to normalize with the Zionist enemy. Living in the United States means living in a reality where the taxes you pay every day go towards supporting the ongoing Nakba, the ongoing Zionist murder of Palestinians with impunity. We pay for the bulldozers that level Palestinian homes. We pay for the military technology that Israel uses to steal, destroy, and poison Palestinian water, natural resources, and crops. We pay for all the normalization efforts that allow the occupation and its evils to continue. It is our duty, having the complicity that we do in Zionist genocide, to stand up to the US government, to declare as people on this land that we refuse to fund Zionism any longer. We declare that while our Nakba is ongoing, our people prove every day that it is temporary because their resistance remains ongoing and will always remain ongoing. Under no circumstances will we see peace in our lifetimes without justice and without an end to the settler colonial regime that has occupied our land for 75 years. Most of all, 